Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Unlaced Podcast. We're back on the dance floor. Thank you for everyone that tuned in to the Jake Brimmer episode. Obviously, he's a superstar in the making, and I'm tipping he could be at the World Cup in Qatar, which we which we we hope definitely because he's been a stellar for Melbourne Victory for the last few years. Now, oddly enough, out of the two of us in this room today. I'm the soccer fanatic and I haven't been to a World Cup, but Dane Swan has actually been to Russia. So, I have. Mate, what was that like? Better than what probably what it is right now. <laughs> you I would were, imagine. You'd never go back again. You're one of the I'm few sure that'll I'm, say that they've I'm been sure to I'd Russia. Be allowed, <laughs> yeah. um, for what I did over there and then from what's going <laughs> on in the world at the moment. Um, no, Russia was, was awesome, actually. Um, now, whether it was because the World Cup was on or that's how it always is, I'm not sure, but. No, no one else will ever find out, but I had a ball over there. Um, you know, just a melting pot of what? How many countries go to the World Cup? 32, 32 or yeah. Yeah, so 32. Oh, and there's probably more countries there because it's just, it's an event. Like, I'm, I liked soccer when I was on Foxtel. Mm. Now, I, can, I don't even know what's, I don't even know the Premier League's on anymore. It's <laughs> Optus Vision. Yeah, Optus Sport. Yeah. yeah. Mate, do you know how? They, they Who's got Optus Sport? Uh, well, I do. I was paying 10 bucks a month, and now they've somehow found out it's like 39 or f- f- 30 bucks a month. Yeah, yeah so I'm cheeky not, bastards. I don't like soccer that And it's long late at night. So I used to watch it Premier um, when it was on Fox Sale and stuff, and you know, was in it, but I've just lost my way when it hasn't been televised. So um, I'm, I'm a soccer. I'm an Arsenal fan for what that's worth. But, <laughs> wow. um, how are they going this year? Who would have thought? They mate, they're flying. Uh, they're, they're on top. Four so. from, four yeah, no. four. <laughs> what are they called? Go Gunners. Yeah. Gunners. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Were you um actually were you taken back by like how big the World Cup was? Like because in Australia uh, we don't. Really, I guess some people don't really know how big yeah. soccer is. I guess, but was it not as? Uh, no, I knew. I kind of knew what I, I was. Kind of had in my head what I was expecting, and it was kind of a bit like that. But you know, how, on a on the same side though, like uh, to have to go down the main one of the main drags in Moscow at you know three p.m. on a Wednesday and have like you know five thousand people walking up and down the streets chanting, drinking piss, like <laughs> carrying on in bars, like you know uh, was was mind blowing. It was such a such a cool uh, couple of weeks to be a part. I wasn't there the whole time. Obviously, I was there a couple of weeks. I think um, before I moved on to other parts of Europe. But hell, yeah, it was. It was real good fun. A good group of boys, and everyone was is there for a good time. Yeah. Like, you know, I imagine rush can be a little bit scary and daunting at times if you're there on your own. But mate, no matter what time in the morning or day or night you were out, there was hundreds or thousands of people just walking the streets, singing, chanting, all in their you know country colours. So, um, I had a ball. Didn't see much soccer. But, <laughs> I bet. Yeah. But I had a great time. Went to two Aussie games and. Um, flew in and out. We st- we based ourselves in Moscow for two weeks, um, I, and that was also pretty cool to see. You know, we're probably one of the more well-supported sides, and we're yeah. I'll say we're not very good, are we? We're, yeah, well, we're yeah. You know, we're, we're a minnow, us I guess. Well, yeah, we're a minnow compared to the giants of you know, world soccer. So, mate, we probably um, supported our side as big as you know most. You know, tens of thousands of Aussies going to games and you know singing. Land down under before it when it came over the speakers. Oh, it was, uh, you know, you, I, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm super patriotic at all. I, you know, yeah. I don't defend Australia. The it's not something that yeah. hill I would die on, but you know, I love my country, but it's not, I'm not fucking super patriotic. But once you get there, you feel, yeah, you know, a bit, a bit more love for your country. And, um, yeah, no, it was, it was awesome. I had, I had a ball. It's, mate, this one's coming around quickly. I know. I don't know what's going to, I don't even know if you can drink in Qatar. I, I, did, I read the other day that like you can't, but surely you can. Well, because I'm not, I'm not. Well, yeah, well, who would go? Well, not go, me. Go on to the desert over an Australian summer and like you yeah, can't drink. I'm thinking things. about it. I'm thinking about it. I've got to, would you? Would you go? Yeah, definitely. Fuck yeah, yeah. I'm trying. Uh, well, we'll see what happens. See if I'm allowed. We got a tough group. We were we were uh, speaking with a. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, yeah, we got a tough group. It's a, pretty much the same as last year. Uh, last in Russia, yeah, France and Denmark are in there again. Oh, yeah. Um. But anyway, I do want to speak to you because on the on the way here, you're a few minutes late. And you had a bit of a, a pet peeve dealing with a parking inspector around the corner. So. Out, of, out of front of my house. Yeah. <laughs> How did that happen? Well, you booked me and my neighbour's car and when we're in the right spot. You have a permit, Fuck right? Fuck, don't infuriate me. Like, I, yeah, I've got permits. That's That was my point. Like, <laughs> I know it's a... Listen, I understand parking inspectors are a low job. Like... You know, but, Tough but gig, mate. oh yeah, it's a low job. But I understand if that's what you got to do to feed your family. Like you know, I'd yeah, I'd go homeless and my family would starve. But <laughs> um, but you know, yeah. you got to do what you got to do, don't you? But uh, yeah, I was out, out the front of my house and they, or well, just up the road, 
and they booked my neighbor's car's been there because they're in Europe. It's been there for two months. I was like, man, that car's been there for two months. You're the first person to put a ticket on. Who do you think's in the right? The hundreds that have come past it in the last seven <laughs> seven weeks, six days, or you? And mate, he's, he's arm and an arm. He goes, well, I thought it was a business ball, mate. I said, how long? Have you obviously, you know, I actually hadn't seen him before, and I, I wasn't, you know, aggressive. And I was like, man, have you? You obviously knew him, mate. He goes, no, I've been here for years. I said, well, unfortunately, you're in the wrong. <laughs> and I was like, mate, you, just, you know, I have to write an email now. I've, you've, I've probably, I've been there 10, 12 years. I reckon f- I've been booked out the front there five times. And every time I have to write, it's just a pain in the ass. I have to write an email to the council and they let it go because I'm in the right. Yeah. Um, if I'm in the wrong, I get parking tickets Yeah. just like everyone else. And I throw them away. Then about four times later, when it's about twice, <laughs> when it's about double the amount. 500 oh, bucks. Exactly. I walk into the post office and we head down and pay it. But um, but we're in the right this time. So What what, what was his response? Like, because how he goes, did I he thought not- it was a place of business. So I go, mate, it's an apartment building. Have a look. Because uh, oh. I parked out the front of the apartments next to me. And there was a, yeah, and there's a shop next to it. And I was like, man, it's, it's an apartment building. He goes, I thought it was a place of business. I go, does it look like a place of business? Oh. Unless they're running hookers through there or running, <laughs> running rub and tugs up through there. Yeah. That's the only businesses maybe. Uh, but Maybe I'll go later yeah, and inspect well, exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. Well, fuck, they should have told me. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but no, so I'm in the right. So I just got to write an email at some stage. And it's raining now, so... Ticket might be a bit wet. Yeah, well, hopefully. If, well, do you know, actually, what well, I called you before. I was actually a bit stressed out today because I've like, got a fucking million things going on. I called you before. I reckon you are the most laid back bloke I've ever met because mm-hmm. I was like, what are you up to? Oh, man, just cruising, man. Just, yeah, doing nothing. Like, everything's like that. I'm like, mate, you must be, you just chill, don't you? Oh, well. You've got a lot going on, but like, your demeanor's like pretty. Um, well, what's the point of worrying everyone else with the shit I've got going on? Yeah. Um, no, um, one, no one gives a fuck about anything, <laughs> what anyone else is doing. True. Well, um, so I just. Just float around and just get done what I need to get done and then we move on. Do you, because I don't know if you'd like this word, I, I'm guessing you wouldn't, but like, you're kind of like Why an entrepreneur, Andre, <laughs> entrepreneur, that's going to be in this Bally B. Um, like, because you got, you got a, quite a lot of businesses um, that you got, or at least your fingers in quite a few pies. Like you said, pies there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Pardon the pun. Yeah. Um, Magpies. Yeah. But, that was a long time ago. Yeah. It was a long I time ago. my fingers in them. <laughs> no, but it's so a footy what, trip. Yeah, what, gone wrong. <laughs> oh, I need to hear about this. But no, what? So, what are you running? You got the clothing business. You got the tattoo yeah. parlor. Well, running's a, a strong word. Yeah, um, invested in. Right. Uh, the bar. Um, the Albion. Yeah. How's that, mate? That place is unbelievable. It's going all right. Um, everything just goes all right. Like I was yeah. saying early while well, podcasts, um, there's stuff sports, but um, investing in a tech company. So basically, I was saying before, if I put a bit more time and effort into things, I'll be a lot more successful than what I am. <laughs> I just sort of let things just float along around me. And every now and then, I might get to, like, you know, I might put a bit more effort into this in the next couple of months, then it just sort of wanes down. Were again. you like that with um, footy, though? Because you kind of, like, I see, I feel uh, like in footy, you were like pretty, in, or towards the back end of your career anyway, it looked like you were like working pretty hard. I don't know, I always worked hard on, the, on game day. Um, <laughs> There's so many, so many layers to that answer. <laughs> well, game day I worked hard because I wanted to play well. Yeah. Um, pre-season, you obviously have to work a bit hard. The rest of it, during the week, I didn't have uh, a great deal of um, sort of insp- inspiration to try hard. Yeah, uh, interesting. Yeah, my motivation wasn't, but look at the right. Why would you want to be training outside right now? Yeah, it sucks. Well, when I already knew that I was playing on the weekend. <laughs> Um, it, did, it really did not interest me training in Melbourne in the really, winter. Yeah, you know, now it's hard through the winter. But as in well. saying that, I'd I'd prefer to run in the inside in the heat in the altitude room and do some sort of interval running sprints. That's what I felt I needed to get the best out of myself. I didn't need myself. I didn't need to touch the balls during the week. I felt like I had good enough touch, and obviously I fumbled and stuff plenty of times out there. But I felt like what was needed for me was to be able to run and get that sort of that. One, two, three, four, five hundred meters strides in um, yeah. on the treaty. So that's what I wanted. Uh, and the other thing was, I felt like I had one effort in me a week, right? And it was game day. So right. maybe that was a mental thing. I just I didn't want to exert any energy apart from after a game. Um, and then yeah, that was it. So that's that's just that was my mentality, right or wrong. Did Collingwood end up giving you like leeway with that mentality, especially when you were yep. like actually bringing home the bacon when you're pretty good when you're good you get a bit of leeway so when up until when did they start allowing that like when did they say you know you're not good enough to oh it took a while well (laughs) well, even at start i was i wasn't even training i was just going out a lot i was a shithead so yeah um 
I just got very lucky. Uh, oh, mate, once you once you become probably 08, 9, 10, yeah, you know, once you start it, winning best and fairest and all the strains and that, you sort of can have a bit more pull. And I, the, the other thing probably was I didn't look after myself real well on the weekend, so it wasn't like my body was good enough to train. Mm. Like I didn't um, prepare or recover like some of the professional athletes out there. So. Mm. Um, I was sore for a lot longer than most because I didn't ice bars, not a big rough for. I think they're for the mentally weak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Why? Why to dissect that for me? Like, what? What is in that? Well, because like, I like the do gooders. No, well, I there. recovered mentally. Right, I, you, I, my, I just told my body I was alright. <laughs> right, <laughs> Mate, I didn't need cold water. Sort of should have played the nineteen sixties yeah. with this mentality. I didn't need cold water to tell me I was healing or recovering. Yeah, I don't know how you guys used to go in the ocean. That's just uh, like, no, that wasn't fun. Yeah, Remember Benny Johnson wore a wetsuit one day and <laughs> Did he? Yeah, yeah. He got stick. Yeah, I, I, I was. I was in fucking impressed. But <laughs> coach and staff were like, no. And he was like, mate, we, no one told me you couldn't. So yeah, he got away with it. But then, then he got banned. You used to wear this um, like beanie helmet thing. Like it was like a, I don't know, you'd wear your Speedos, but then you had this like, I don't know, it looked like almost like a Russian hat or something mm. around you to keep your head warm. And everything everything you could. The beach things were, were not good. And they always made it at like six or seven in the morning, the assholes. <laughs> like, the beach is, uh, last time I checked, the beach is still there in the afternoon. <laughs> like, are like, they really? Of apparently. Yeah, well, there, there you go. Yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. But the, yeah, that wasn't good. <clears throat> that was freezing. Um, so I went a big rough for that. Ice baths, no good. Um, so yeah, I just wasn't. I didn't get good. I didn't, my body didn't get good till about the day before the game. So I was just in a vicious cycle for twenty five weeks. Fucking hell! I actually um, no one I, sees that. Yeah, no one sees no that. No one sees yeah. how sore you are, and everyone just sees what you do on the weekend. But well, mate, your foot, your foot when you stepped in here, yeah, is, is it still the same from back in the AFL days? Uh, like is that still the same problem or is it different now? No, nah, I had surgery and retired because of it. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. But like even now, like when you're yeah, playing, quite, well, I played footy on the weekend, so it's it's I don't know what it's from. I must have got must have done something to it. Fuck so hell. don't know. It's just it was a bit sore, and I was like, fuck, it's a bit looks a bit worse than what it is. But I'll I, be right. I actually just actually to go back to the um your businesses. Do you actually? I'm just interested to know. Do you do you have an office? Do you have a home office or something that you work out of? Or you like? I have a desk. Yeah, you have a desk. <laughs> because we did a we did I a don't Zoom use it. we did a Zoom call the other day, yeah. and I was like, I swear you're sitting in an office or a desk, and I was actually like taken back because you didn't strike me as an no, office. No, no, well, oh, we put one in because we had a, a spare room there. There you um, go. Now Taylor uses it a bit when she works for my wife. I don't use it, mate. No, yeah, um, I didn't think so. No, nah. I didn't think so. Now, um, just to go into because obviously since we've um started doing some stuff with Swanee and Jake, which those that haven't checked it out, please go and do it. Get onto the YouTube or Instagram. And um, if you actually want to know, the, the first podcast I did with Swanee was, I don't know, six, seven that? months ago, maybe. I don't even longer, maybe. It might have even been last year. Like this time last year. Could have been that long. But we, was COVID? Oh, we wouldn't have been allowed no, out of our house back then. No, we? we were at the burger place. At Royal Stats, I know, yeah. 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 yeah I've we, got no idea. Actually, I've got no idea. Anyway, for those that want to hear about Swanee's career and stuff and like hit the man himself, go back and check that one out because this one's going to be talking about... I guess more the more the today stuff, but there was a few questions that I did want to go through around your time in Collingwood, yeah. and obviously I've mentioned how fucking chill you are, um, in general. But it kind of made me realise that, like in the big games where you always seem to play well, like maybe that chill demeanour kind of helped you out. Did you ever get like overawed by the moments or nervous uh-huh. like that? Because you never look like it. You know, I don't think you get overawed. You obviously got enough anxiety is the right word, but you obviously feel it a bit different when you're. You know, a, f- a Sunday afternoon game versus Freo on the MC- or versus Gold Coast or GWS when, when they first come into the league when they were playing, you know, when you beat yeah. them by 100 points in the freezing cold MCG on Sundays. L- that game's a little bit different to running out in the prelim in front of 100,000, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, all coaches and that say you've got to prepare the same. But clearly, it's you know, it's the butterflies in the stomach or whatever you want to call it, the nervous energy, it's definitely there on the big games. But try to embrace it. I, you know, the, the, chic- the small games... I had the I, know, some, I had the reverse mentality. I wanted to play. I had less interest in the small games mm. and big, more interest in the big games because there was no one watching the small games. And so yeah. you want to play well when everyone's watching. So I was, and I'm sure many people have this, but I was more keen to play well in the big games and more excited for the big games. And when the when the when you play Collingwood, you play in front of such big crowds. You play in front of sixty, seventy thousand minimum every week. When you go somewhere, you play in front of eight thousand. You're like, yeah, yeah, fuck that. I can't be fucked. Yeah. Well, this is boring. So, um, and I wanted everyone to see me play well. So, uh, so the big games, I 
got not and get excited more, but I was probably more not focus was the word, but I certainly had more um, motivation to play well. Yeah, and you you want to play well in big games, and um, <clears throat> my job was to get the ball and. The bigger the game, the more I wanted the ball. I yeah. couldn't do much with it, but I fucking wanted it as much as I could. Well, how do you go playing footy now then? In front of, like, see, for instance, I can't play local soccer. Like, it's just uh, for that reason. Uh, like, it's, like, I do because I got a family I need to get out of the house. Yeah, is that why? Yeah, yeah. It probably keeps you fit as well. well I'm not sure I'm fit, but um, <laughs> but like, my, obviously my career ended prematurely. So how old were you actually? When Thirty-two. It happened? Thirty-two. So, so I didn't play for six. This is the first year I basically played footy again. Oh really? Yeah. So. Um, Mate, you've done the rounds too. Like you've been. I think when we first started, Swanee and Jake. Like one week you're in Taz, yeah, one week you're slotted myself in. around. Yeah, yeah. I might just go into local communities and helping other communities. Yeah, giving back. That's what I'm about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the man yeah, of the man people. Of, exactly right. Yeah, so, you say that a lot. Yeah, you um, actually are. But no, I I enjoy doing those things. You, you know, I don't miss playing AFL at all. But you know, every you're a sportsman, everything they tell you is you miss <laughs> the locker room and the yeah, fuck. You know, being around forty blokes. And I wasn't. I'm no. Speaking of offices, I couldn't work in an office. I'd be in HR every second day. Yeah. Like, the way I speak, my language. You practically were at Collingwood. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> no, back then they didn't have them, so you'd be a bit more trouble now. <laughs> um, but, like, I'll, I'll be fired pretty quickly from an office job. So, but, yeah. you know, being around 40 blokes or, you know, however many's on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, local list, 25 blokes every week, you know, two, three times a week is, is good for me. I like to have a laugh and, and relax and, um, and you take yourself a far less serious yeah. at local for me. You know, you don't have to train. Or you do, you know, have, mate. We actually had an alcohol ban. I was like, alcohol ban? They were like, yeah, night, uh, no drinking the night before the game. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that was the alcohol that's ban. That's their alcohol ban. Oh, that's they, awesome. They fell off his seat. I was like, what? <laughs> my, blokes, my blokes were rolling up at 4 30 in the morning, like, being, getting to bed at 4 30. I was like, fucking hell. Well, man, half of them like, mate. What are you? Okay, what are you doing? Well, we're playing in the last eight hours. Yeah, because mate, you just do the kind of said, mate. Please, fuck, come on. The, the, not the, did you like, have it the night before? You no, like no. The, the night after a game, like yeah. the night of a game. Yeah, so maybe that'll trickle into the, the day after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like never. Jeez, that's bold to go the day before. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's but, fuck. but they made and they do it all the time, which is fine. Um, so like it's a bit different local mm. footy, so it's it's good fun. Um, but yeah, man, I go all right. Like I'm 38, so I don't have much in the tank, but. Was no. it, um, did you find, were you, were you like comfortable walking away even because it wasn't necessarily your decision? I uh, guess, no, it was footy? my decision. They, oh, it was. Bucks asked me, uh, he said you give me uh, a contract, but it'd be about, so I got a career ending injury payout. Oh, right. So he said it'd basically be about the same as your career ending injury payout. <laughs> so I was like, see you later, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thanks for that. That'll yeah. do. Yeah. Um, hindsight, thanks. whether my foot could have, I'm not sure my foot could have, uh, handle the requirements of being an AFL footballer. It's a lot of being on your feet, funnily enough. Yeah. Jake. A lot oh, of yeah, running, a lot of kicking. Iron, yeah, yeah, some <laughs> people might not believe that, but yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and we'll bottom out. We'll go on shit house. But if you had to tell me 24 months later, we'd be... Well, that's a, what I was going to say. What, was it, were you 2016? And yeah. then obviously so the grand first, final. First game. So basically it was 40 seconds. You know, I played 40 seconds in the first game of 2016. Yeah. So I was all... Now, if you had told me 2018 we would be in the grand final, do I try and hang on? Yeah, you don't know, but um, you know, we the unfortunate thing is once your side bottoms out and you you're over 30, especially 32, 33, you know, AFL clubs get rid of all the old blokes. Yeah. Um, you know, it's and also funnily enough, the AFL is not a development league. You know, like you should be playing your best players. So, which sometimes I think gets lost on AFL clubs. Mm. Um, it's not a development league. I'd but say St Kilda definitely gets lost on. Jeez, we just develop all the time. Fucking yeah, hell. exactly. Been. So you got to play best players. But you know, and I, I thought if my body can't get to where my brain expects it, even if you, especially at the top level, if you're that point one percent off, and you, you know that tiny little half a step off, and my game was based on speed and power and agility. If you didn't have it, yeah. you're no good. So. And they say, die a hero, live long enough to become the villain. So, <laughs> yeah, die well, a hero. Yeah, it's better they say, you know, why did you than why don't you? Exactly. Yeah, so, uh, funnily enough, Braden, you were actually doing a doco on Swanee when he did his foot. He was supposed to be following around for like potentially his last year and then what, round one dropped down, which it must have been fucking painful because I don't reckon you're the type of guy that would show uh, pain or go down easy. But Yeah, no, it hurt a bit. Um, I walked off though. Uh, you did actually, yeah. And walked down the rooms. I actually... I actually th- I actually thought my foot wasn't the problem. Oh, really? Uh, I just thought I rolled my ankle because I was 
got up. I was like, fuck that out of bed. I walked to the bench. I was like, I'll be right. And Doc was like, you're right. I said, oh, man, and I never tape my ankles. Never have. Um, feel too restricted. I don't feel like I had agility and speed with it, with ape dangles. So I said, man, I'm, I think my ankle's a bit sore. We're just going to have to tape that up and I'll be good to go. And as we're walking to the bench, I felt the bone moving in my leg where um, as I'm moving, going downstairs, I could feel the bone moving in my leg. I was like, man, I think I've broken my leg. Um, and he just said, yeah, you've broken your leg. Um, he's like, about, that's about eight weeks. I was like, yeah, sweet, no problems. Well, I'm fast heal. I'll be right. I'll be back in six. And then um, he was like, what about your foot? I go, well, don't worry about there that. There you are mentally telling yourself again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, my body will be fixed in yeah, six. <laughs> exactly, see? Um, no ice bars being <laughs> yeah. done at all. And I'd already shaved two weeks off me recovery <laughs> yeah, time. Um, and he's like, what about your foot? And I was like, man, that's no stress. Don't worry about it. Like, it's just a sprained ankle. That'll, be, that'll clearly be fine before the leg heals. And then about 15 minutes later, my foot just went boom and puffed up like a hammerhead shark, two like baseballs on the side of each foot. And I was like, you better go get the doc to Ann who, you know, worked down in the club. And um, Faz had nearly broken his neck and Witsy had split the webbing in his uh, – hand so the doc was needed for another half an hour so he come down he goes oh mate what's happening i said well you're the doctor you fucking tell me <laughs> um he's, I go, what is it? he goes i've got no idea what it is so fucking some doctor you are um, <laughs> he's like there's so many bones in that in the foot because what you don't want it to be is a lince frank ligament oh. and sure enough that's what it was but plus i broke like five five bones in my foot as well so it wasn't just a lince frank ligament who you know you can come back from pretty you know quickish i broke five bones in my foot, my leg, and my lens frame living. So I don't do things in halves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that we know. Yeah. That we know. Actually, one of, a couple. there's a couple of like maybe unknown facts to the the general population out there. But you are, uh, I think it was from 2010 to 2014 or 2009 to 2013, a four-year period, you had 109 Brownlow votes or oh, something like that. Yes, yeah, so you could have like, what, you mean one, one, but like- Oh, you've been on the record saying you probably should have had three. That's a pretty ordinary four years. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, very ordinary. Should have had some more. I think. Um, I think one of the great one of the great stories as well is I think it was the oh nine one. So this is a year before you won the Brownlow. You actually didn't get invited to the 07. Brownlow. It was oh seven. You didn't yeah. get invited to the Brownlow, yeah. and then you almost took it out. Yeah, I was on Mad Monday. You're on Mad Monday. Yeah, we got beat by Geelong in the prelim by us in in oh seven. Yeah, by five points. So what what happened there? Because like. Yeah, you obviously didn't get invited. I think you ended up getting like 20-odd votes and like coming in yeah, the Yeah, I was top. leading halfway through. Halfway, um, and you were on a mad Monday. Yeah, dressed fuck. up in a Spider-Man suit. Yeah, it would have been panic stations. Damn, if you I, had couldn't one. Have, I couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> oh, you would have done your speech from there. I, mean, I wasn't given one. They rang me, started to panic, but I was like, I'm not coming in. You didn't invite me, so you can get fucked. Yeah, good. I like that. Uh, but I, was, I think Bartel went on the winner by enough anyway. So, um, yeah, the, how you get invited to the Brownlow is the... AFL or whoever is in charge of the Brownlow invites, they send the club the four or five invites they want to come to the, to the function. Now the club look at that and go, okay, you know, well, they might go, well, fuck, you know, Jake's one of our best and fairest. He he's, hasn't been invited. I reckon he's got more chances. So they'll go back right, and go, right. you know, actually, I maybe should invite him. He's pole well in a BNF or he's done this. So that's happened. So that's how people get invited to the Brownlow. So obviously, what happened that year was um, that was my first, that was my breakout year, I guess. So the AFL obviously didn't know who I was and didn't think I'd go any good, and obviously, and then <clears throat> then the club obviously didn't think I had a good year either because they didn't fucking want me to go either. What so, the f- um, yeah, so I didn't get invited, and I was on my Mad Monday, which was a blessing that I didn't get invited. And then we were all we we're at the Rising Sun, then we we're all getting out of our costumes, I think, to go out on a Monday night or whatever. We saw all Digis House getting changed and the brown light obviously just started and, you know, we're all sitting there getting changed, carrying on as you're doing then. Early, I got all my votes early so I went from all just fucking around to all sitting on the couch watching. watching. Yeah, and I kept getting votes and then managers ringing me, going mad, clubs ringing me. I was like, they go, they might want you to go in and I was like, mate, they get fucked. I'm not like going mate. in. I so, firstly, I wouldn't be, I, can't, I could hardly speak fucking and then hell. would have made a cunt of myself. So, um, but yeah, uh, it's it's a story. I think I got a poll of twenty odd votes something like that year, and Bartel won with about thirty. So I didn't get a vote in the second half of the year. So maybe they rigged it. Maybe they, they took probably all did. We, they took all the votes out, and then they loaded you up the next few years because you had like a, I don't know how you had that many votes, yeah, mate. That's so like three, four. Was it three years or four years? I, I don't know. No it's it was a lot, mate. It was like pretty much contention every year. But well, they um, well, they obviously liked me. The umpires over that four yeah. years. You never argued with them. What's the 
so I had no energy. I was knackered by I needed every set breath I could get rather than running around yelling at umpires all the time. And um, as the old everyone says, an umpire's never changed his mind. Yeah. So and I was like, great. If I have freaky, guess me. Great decision. Umpire, yeah. that was terrific. <laughs> uh, trying to get as many votes as I could. You're a very logical man. Actually, there's one. Um, I think this might be a well known thing, but I've never heard you talk about it. But it looked like a constant drinking game at a Brownlow. Whenever the camera would pan to you, you would have a sip of beer. And yeah. like, I just noticed that after like six or seven pans because you were polling votes. Was that a was that a drinking game? Going most play, yeah. Most clubs do it. Do um, they? Even though it's a lot harder to get beers now because I don't put them on the table ah. after Fev fucked it for everyone. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, you know, you everyone, yeah, you, you get like a big A um, four bit of you know plastic sheet there with all of the top ten or twenty chances on it. And everyone goes around and you have to pick one or two people and obviously one vote, you know, it's like a one finger scale, two, oh, two right. and three. It's so like, it's... you know, like a big one. So and obviously you get yourself. So it was bullshit for me because I was always getting all the votes. So <laughs> You've been knackered yeah, but, by yes, round 10. But um, the year I won it, we're in the granny the next week, so. You couldn't drink. No. Well, I, I would have liked to. Yeah, well, I'm sure yeah. you drank more after it. But mm -hmm. speaking of um, your mob, Collingwood, our big, big year. How would, how do you summarise their season? Did you expect it coming in them polling top four? No, of course not. Uh, I everyone they're all so called experts do their rankings at the start of the year. In the latter, I think I had them tenth. So I thought they'd win eight or nine games this year and improve on last year. Uh, I don't think the positive, most positive kind of supporter could imagine they would finish fourth and win sixteen, you know, fourteen in a row, whatever it was, under two goals or what you know, whatever the yeah, stat is, fifteen points. Or something. Yeah. yeah. So uh, now they've been. Amazing. I think no matter what happens from here, it's a win. Uh, you know, they at least play a couple of finals. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think they're, you know, it's a huge win, I think. Um, you know, did they get lucky in a couple of games? Maybe, but not to win that many. It's a definite skill. And they've been taught it, obviously, and got a huge belief in the way they play. So, yeah. And at worst, which I've said all year, uh, they're more fun to watch. Yeah, they are. They're so like, tough. They make your eyes bleed the last couple of years, the way they played. So yeah. um, they're more fun to watch. And they're the best ticket in town yeah. at the moment. 80, you know, 70, 80, 90,000 <clears throat> close games, you know, come from behind. Um, they're, they're great to watch. So like The Collingwood bandwagon's well and truly out. Like it is everywhere you look and everywhere yeah. you're on it's social odd. media. It's everything. very weird to hear people are barricade for Collingwood who – don't yeah yeah yeah. If you don't brave Collingwood, you hate them. So it's like a feel good team. The, the pie, which is, which is odd. I don't, I don't like that. No, <laughs> no. I, I like to be hated. Um, yeah, at yeah. Collingwood. So we've got enough supporters. We don't need everyone else's. Yeah, that's true. You know, we don't need to be anyone else's second favorite side. So what, what, um, in particular about the Pies this year have you liked? Because they've obviously been quite attacking and in, their intensity's gone up, but they've also got so many young players that are playing probably above their years too. Yeah, well, I think everything you've just you've just said. Um, the first ones they're more enjoyed to watch. They're playing with a game plan that is exciting, and they take the game on and <clears throat> let the young kids play on instinct. Because once again, believe it or not, kids who get drafted are actually good at football. <laughs> uh, funnily enough, they actually know what they're doing. So let them play on instinct, and you know, usually everyone, you know, casually first option is usually your best option. So go out and play and do what you do. If you're quick, use your pace. If you're agile, use your agility. If you know, if you whatever it is, if you like take hangers, do it. Um, mm. That, yeah, they've brought some youth in who have obviously, you know, we all know, but we don't need to tell you, but all the young kids are going really well. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and the, I think the club and Fly, what he's brought to the footy club, just so much more energetic and more of a welcoming place. And you can tell the, the boys obviously love him. Um, they really enjoy being at the footy club from what I hear. And and it's evident out in the track. Yeah. And it's evident game day. Like, you can tell they put in the work and they have a huge belief in themselves that they're in every game they play. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to take a quick pause in this episode, which I hope you're enjoying to acknowledge our partners. Now, this episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Now, none of us like having sweaty sacks, and the king of crotch comfort, Manscaped, have actually spent two years designing some pretty cool boxer briefs. Now, I have had the opportunity of wearing these boxer briefs, and they are some of the softest and most comfortable fabric that I have ever wore in any underwear. 
I do support uh, what they do from a holistic part of their products. I've used a lot of their products and they are fantastic. But their new boxer briefs specifically, they actually give you gills on your groins so they're breathable. So I implore you to get out there, use our discount code to, to start purchasing them. Uh, you'll get 20% off plus free worldwide shipping with the discount code UNLACED on manscaped.com. That's unlaced at manscaped.com for 20% off and worldwide free shipping. So get some boxer brief and some other product while you're at it. Let's get back into the episode. I, I wanted to ask you around um, Jack Ginevan because I I, rec- I don't know if you were in a similar position. Cause I feel like maybe when you started making headlines, you were slightly more mature, but you played with obviously like Dale Thomas mm-hmm. and guys that in like their first or second year were just like playing as good as they'd mm-hmm. ever played. Like how have you sort of... I guess seeing his game and then also the kind of <clears throat> the scrutiny or the the press he's copped for such a young uh, kid. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, <clears throat> the scrutiny he's copped. Like I've said this as well many times. If he played at GWS, North Melbourne, St Kilda, Gold Coast, no one would know his name. Yeah, like it's because he won an Anzac Day medal, got thrust onto the big stage, like and the, the head high ducking, whatever it is, like the ducking free kicks. If he was doing that, like I said, at North Melbourne. GWS, out of sight, out of mind club, free mental over there. Kane Corns doesn't go on footy classified and do a three minute spiel about him. Yeah. You know, people aren't writing about him in the papers because he'd be irrelevant because he's at a club that's irrelevant. Well, yeah. not irrelevant, but just not as big as Collingwood. So it's because he's at Collingwood and people, once again, love to be hated. They, Collingwood sells papers, it gets people clicks, people tune in to TV shows to hear him talk about it. All the big, all the big clubs do, the Carlton's. So Jack. Being a Collingwood is that the scrutiny's come on him, but he seems like he loves the attention. Yeah, which you, know? you would love because that's kind of like your era. He a lot of those it. guys that cop the attention seem to not be affected. Yeah, too much so and I, I think it did affect him a bit because when he mate, once they started, and the worst thing was he got umpired with bias, which umpires shouldn't be allowed to. Yeah, uh, not allowed to do. He was absolutely umpired with bias. Where if he was going for the ball, fucking you, mate, you could karate kick his head clean off, and there'd and be like play on. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Like every time we went for the ball, the umpires are going to make a statement. Go, I don't give a fuck what happens to him. Like he ain't getting a free kick. So, and that is being umpired with bias, which is illegal. So, it, it, not being a footy expert in me, like asking this, like genuinely, is the where he gets a lot of those high free kicks. Is that footy smarts or well, is that so. like a cheap? No, I like, think it's I think it's smart. Penelbury's been doing it forever. Like, I come from soccer. When someone gives you contact, you drop. It's yeah. just smart. It's like yeah, Penelbury's been doing it forever. Joel Selwood's an expert at it, but no one bags them. Yeah. Like, Kane Corns, you know, all the media don't come out and say they k- 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 bring out a pick on this young kid who's, you know, plays like he loves footy, which, well, when he's he playing, I would imagine he plays now like he was playing when he was 16, 17. Flair loves it, loves to kick goals, loves to celebrate. So he's brought that into AFL. So I'm assuming that's how he thinks he plays his best footy when he's enjoying it. That's how I did when he's enjoying himself and, and having a good time. So um, I think it's a skill. I wasn't smart enough to do it, but yeah. the Luke Shuey is great at it. Selwood's brewing at it. Penelbury's brewing at it. This young kid's come in, done it, and it's worked. So, and, you know, the AFL jump up and down, and the head sacrifice saying, you cannot touch the head. Barber, you know, if it's an accident, it's still reportable. Mm-hmm. This poor kid gets his head smashed off every, you know, week after week, and it's play on. So, is the head sacrosanct or not? I think if you're smart enough to work it, mm-hmm. it's a free key. If you, if you, again, tackled high is high, no yeah. matter which way you slice it. If you were still like in the four walls of the footy club, like, you know, with Pendles and Steel and the leadership group and stuff, what would you kind of be? I mean, I don't know if you'd be much of a talker, like prepping teammates up, but what would be your sort of your advice to him going uh, through the storm he had? I'm sure they've said it's just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Wouldn't um, change a thing, would yeah, you? Yeah, no, not at all. Maybe, and yes, he did go looking for the contact a bit sometimes. Like, you know, you see the vision where he could have handballed instead he goes. So maybe just, you know, do look for the, your teammates. Don't try and go. But if you're there, if it's there, go for it. But just keep doing what you're doing because it's working. You won't end up You kick goals. You don't miss much. Um, yeah, just keep being you. Keep being what got you to be in the play you are. And if that's being bubbly and carrying on and I can give the crowd shit once you kick a goal Let or fly, lapping yeah. up the booze or whatever it is, just keep doing you because it's made you the player you are. And the, <laughs> the second you go away from that, you become lesser of a player. Yeah, that's very true. Um, I'm interested to know, I don't know if you you watch individuals much, but do you have a favourite player that you like watching in the AFL? Outside of Collingwood. Yeah, uh, well, Collingwood well, as well, whatever, whatever's like. Well, obviously Dustin, Shea Bolton is obviously super to watch. Yeah, he's a superstar, Shea Bolton. Uh, Chad Warner's pretty good from Sydney. He's yeah. he's fun to watch. Um, anyone who 
takes the game on, uses pace and like breaks lines, and uses their leg speed to get in and out of traffic. Uh, is are the players that I like. Um, so so there's there's a couple who else in the finals. Melbourne, I think Oliver's the best midfielder in the league. Yeah. Um, I think that's he's the best midfielder in the league. He's he's what he's turned himself into. You know, he just couldn't kick, and you know, but now he's really he's damaging by foot. He's unbelievable inside and out. So. Um, I like watching him. What other clubs are there? Geelong. Do you think? Um, do you think Dusty's like the one of the best of all time? If not, if not the like, would yeah, you put him un- questionable? Uh, best finals. Pl- best finals. Uh, I don't think any has anyone ever done what he's done. No, like, he's, no, he's the best finals player of all time. That's unquestionable. But greatest player of all time. For me, I think key forwards are harder to find than midfielders. Yeah. So, but even though he sort of goes forward, so I, I would rate key forwards in that ahead of all midfielders, just because. You can replace. You can sort of replace the midfielder. Like you can replace whoever the best midfielder is. You want to say Ablett, Judd, Buckley, whatever. You can replace them with someone like me, mm. or you know, someone Petrarch, Oliver, who can sort of do that. Maybe not on their level. You can't replace a Carey, Ablett, you know, Matthews, mm. you know, Lockett, all those kind of guys, Rewalt. So I think they're hard to buddy. They're irreplaceable. So for me, that's why they'll always be the best players. What? Because there was like, what was it? 2016, 2017, he just like added, like he was already a superstar, but like he just became by 17. far. The, yeah, it was 17. But, and, and I think around that time, like you just never heard about him, never heard, never saw him in the streets. Still like don't. He, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like what, what was sort of the. He's just how he is. Just um, what, just, he just flicked a switch one day and thought this is. I was in football wise. Yeah. Well, uh, just in general, like with, with football, I mean, football no, I think took it, a turn I think there. It so. takes a while for the penny to drop. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, you just got more common, got older, got more mature. And then, um, and Richmond, it's also a lot easier to play well on a good side. Mm. And Richmond turned the corner that year. And um, he, Dustin's not one, you know, a lot of us midfielders run around, want to have 35 every week because yeah. it looks good on the stats. And like, I need to go and have 30 and go around hunting cheap kicks. And we all did it. And any midfielder out there that says they don't, it's a liar because mm. um, that's what the game's based on. If you've had, you know, when you've had zero, trust me, you run around, you, run around the back get a handball fuck get me involved all the mids do it all the good mids do it but he's the one exception he literally does not care if he has 15 or 55 mm-hmm. um, he just will do what he does during the regular season help us all win then when it comes to finals and the big games he's like righto oh, yeah. now it's my turn who do you, you think is going to take out the Brownlow is it a tough one yeah I actually haven't seen I remember the look at the, the odds I'm not a huge Brownlow better but um <laughs> I, well, Clayton Oliver's, I think, is the best player in the league, so best midfielder in the league, and it's a midfielder's award. So I don't know what he's probably the favourite. Yeah, I think he is. Okay, I well, think him and Brayshaw. Well, the top I don't two. think Brayshaw will win it. No, there you go. Um, Oliver. Uh, Brayton, who else you would be? Lockie Neal, in. maybe. Oh, yeah. I, I think Brayshaw, I don't know how many, Brayshaw might have voted last year, but it usually takes you a year or two to get noticed. So I, I don't think Brayshaw will win it. Now he could, he could prove me wrong. Um, I think Oliver, who else is that? A, Collingwood very even, so no Geelong, also very even. So there no midfielder who's really dominated this year. So you don't think anyone from them. Melbourne, Petrarca and Brayshaw might take votes on, but uh, Lockie Neal, they've won a lot of games. Mm. Shay but Shay Bolt might pull well. He's a super. I didn't realize how good he was until yeah. this year. There you go. Yeah, Cripps, Took Miller. Um, oh, Took Miller could pull well. Okay, I'm sure they'll win enough games. Um, I like I like Oliver four bucks. So Lockie Neal's three dollars. Oliver's four. I'll take um, I'll take Oliver. There you go, yeah, Oliver. Four bucks. Oliver at four bucks. Yeah, and I have um, maybe kind of rosy. Each hundred. He's a hundred. He's a hundred to one. Maybe top five or something. Like that. <laughs> there you go. We love that. Now um, I actually wanted to to talk about Swanee and Jake for a little bit because I don't know how we've ended up there, but somehow we're in a washing machine of putting chili down our throats and yeah, doing nah. all sorts of weird shit. Um, but you having fun? Not really. Yeah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Have Love you it. seen what we've done? Yeah, I know. The fuck it. Mate, I had a guy I had a guy message me telling us off for not doing the hot sauce that was the bomb in the uh, hot one show because we, apparently we left that one out and apparently that's the hottest one. Like, But it's not at the top. It's like third or fourth last, but it's all like extracts of old chili. So it's not actually flavorsome. It's just like battery acid. Um, and yeah, some guys like that. I thought, you I thought done- we tried it. I thought we tried it. No, nah, there's one called Da Bomb. Oh, do we not have it? No, nah, we didn't have that oh, one. I thought you meant we actually left one out of it. No, 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 no. We didn't actually have it. 
Tell him to send it to us. Yeah, I know. Well, I said, well, based off that, we're gonna have to try it. Yeah. So, um, um, but yeah, we yeah, do. No, 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 nothing's nothing's been fun about it at all. Yeah, Jake. it's been awful actually so far. Nothing. Yeah, I don't know if anyone's even enjoying it, but like we're not enjoying it. It's no. fucking. Like, it's hard work. Um, the yeah, chili, no, it wasn't the chili burger was that was nasty. That yeah, fucking hurt. that hurt. That hurt. <laughs> that hurt a couple of hours later. That's what yeah, it the did. day it was a day ruiner. Yeah. 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 No, that wasn't. That was not pleasant at all. It was just yeah, trying to eat it with speed. Was not good. Yeah, we're um, yeah, we're gonna be chained it up. We're gonna be doing some other stuff. I, did I actually up, um, I did hiccups immediately as soon as I yeah, your first bite. Yeah, 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 I remember. Do you know I actually and this may be a leak, but um, when they're gonna get Tommy Sheridan on one of the Swanee Jakes, he's like, mate, I'll come on, just don't like fuck me up with chili. Mm. So we've got so this, we've got, we've got this chili. fucking wrap now. So yeah, maybe we should do a chili. We one. need you to eat some fruit. <laughs> yeah, oh, fuck. What do we need to eat? You eggs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, I'll do it. I'll do it for the people. We're man of the people. Ask the people what they want. Yeah, well, mate, we've got some weird ones. Yeah, some guy said that we should. Um, oh, fucking read them because, mate, they're <laughs> really. Oh, I'm talking really weird. Some guy said we should review soup soup cans and and guess what labels they are. Wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even know what a soup soup can is. Soup cans. Yeah, yeah well, like, do you know what I mean? He goes, some guy, some girl goes, I want to see Dane rattled by something, anything. He is so funny, but chill as fuck as always. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't much help. Undie brands, including past experiences. What does that mean? Undie brands. Well, we're going to try them on. Yeah. Like what? We, we give our views of underwear. That was, you that, can be the, you're going to be the model. How's your rig looking? Not great. Not great. Yeah. I'm a bit of a facade, like yeah. the colored guy that should be shredded, okay. but not. Okay. Someone said we should play Sting Ping, which is table tennis where you end up like, if you lose a point or you lose the game, you got to put your table tennis. Yeah. I'm I'm good backhand, no forehand. Yeah. What about you? I haven't played. I, mean, I haven't played in five, six years. Well, I have played in, since I was playing in AFL, but I was okay. I wasn't I was you know I could I was serviceable. I wasn't up the top in the side, but I was just in the middle somewhere. Oh, shit, it could be down the track. Then yeah, this is what it was. Guess the canned soup taste test. That's what it is. I don't eat enough soup from various cans. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, listen, if that's what the people want. Well, yeah. I'm, some, I'm, sh- give us a, send us a video of exactly what that is. But There's a few good ones. I mean, someone said vaping flavors, which is ironic, but um, something, yeah, Kit Kat. Illegal? Are you allowed to vape these days? No, you're not. I think no, I'll you shouldn't go. be doing that. But, um, no, no, no. but the, to, to round out, I just wanted to talk about, um, you got a chip at the end so of So Swanee Joe, where do you find it? Because oh, I wouldn't know. Oh, YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. Have you ever, have you watched an episode back? No. Uh, the, the, um, I watched the hot ones. The hot ones is funny. Yeah, yeah, because like it ends the show like you you can't sit still and you have to walk off, uh-huh. and I'm closing it out, but I can't open my eyes. <laughs> that was hot, man. <laughs> yeah, it was oh, really. Funnily hot. enough, it was fucking hot. There was one, Woo! I think. Yeah, because you do you know what's funny is you brought in your own Tabasco yeah. from home. Yeah. And the first three or four were like it was piss take, and the Tabasco should have been down the end, mm. and that fucked us. And then like I couldn't I couldn't really recover. And I was like, man, that's sitting on your shelf at home. Yeah, that wasn't very fun. It wasn't a smart idea. Whoever decided to do the hot wings challenge, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Are you, um, so you're going away to Thailand at the end of the year. Yeah. Um, was that, I saw like people can go there with yeah. you or something, win a trip with Dane. Yeah, that'll be all right. Fiji as well. Um, we've got a little bit planned. Got a yeah. good life, mate. Ah, uh, not really. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mate, it's just like Instagram, you know, yeah. not that I'm on Instagram much these days unless I'm promoting some, but. Um, my life's all right, mate. It's family now, so it's not what it's cracked. Not what it used to be. I used to, I was driving, I was driving somewhere. Maybe home from footy. We well, this two weeks ago we may we play a final this last Sunday. We may we on we may be out now depending on what's happened. But I was driving around from footy last Sunday and like it was a beautiful day. We just won a final. <laughs> driving, I was like, fuck. You just smell like finals in the air. And, like everyone on their silly Sunday and footy trips. And then I was like. Fuck, I'll give anything to go back to this time of year where I've got not one responsibility in yeah. life. Like to have no, <clears throat> you get beat mid, say mid September, and you've got till first first week in November to do absolutely whatever you want, not have one care in the world, not have one responsibility. I nearly started crying. Yeah, nearly started, <laughs> and still getting paid a healthy buck, oh, and you're not mate, working. Started like, well you know up. I, mean? I was like, fuck, fuck. I'm, I just what would I would do to be like, boys? Let's go to the pub Tuesday afternoon. Finish whenever you wanted, sleep till whenever you wanted, order fucking Uber Eats, get up, boys, let's go to the pub again. Then we get on a flight, you know, one-way ticket, you know, 
but first up, then you just fucking do what you like, mate. Then you just figure it out from there. Oh, mate, those the are the freedom, days. yeah. Get me out. <laughs> Get me, he's, a, to, he's welling up right now. I know, I need to remove those memories from my brain. Yeah, can you, well. So it really upsets me. After this question, you can, but. I'm going, I've got a child, I've got, yeah, yeah, I know. Spot, I've got to pay bills, I've got responsibilities. Yeah, yeah but your, your right. email and parking inspectors, yeah, it's exactly. all happening. I'm, I'm a grumpy, I'm running around yelling at clouds, <laughs> you know, running around yelling at parking inspectors. So uh, it's well, no, give, can you give me, uh, uh, This I hope this doesn't hurt you, but can you give me your top three end of season trips? Oh, like like e- destinations? Yeah, as in like either the le- just the actual trip itself. As in ones I've been on, you mean destinations? No, nah, the ones you've been on, like the footy <laughs> trips yeah, I'm okay. talking. Well, your first one obviously would have to be up there. And that's That was, mate, half the people who probably listen to this weren't even born then. 2002, first time I've been overseas, basically anywhere without the – I've been to schoolies without the family, but first time I've been really been anywhere without the family, we went to Cancun. Um, for a week, 10 days. That was the first time I'd been overseas with a group mate. In fact, did that, did my eyes, eyes open up to some oh, shenanigans that was Christ. going on in the world. I was yeah. like, this is fucking what happens <laughs> when you're not with your parents. Holy shit. Um, How good is this? Oh, mate, it was fucking incredible. Uh, <laughs> that was that was a memorable one. Um, two more. Probably... The first Vegas trip where we did it, we understood what you had to do there. So you knew you'd been to Vegas before yeah. and you came back. So we'd done it before and like, you know, we had no idea about buying tables and like right. pool parties and like, you know, we just, the first time we only with, with two or three of us only for a weekend before we moved on, you know, lining up for nightclubs for our, you know, it's just, oh, right, right. it fucking stunk. But yeah. like, we went back with like all our, our four or five footy mates, but then two or three of all our other mates. We had like 15, 20 of us, huge villa, like. And then you did it properly, mate. That was um, forget. Well, that is forgettable because my memory is very, very hazy <laughs> from that week. Um, so that was awesome. And then probably the first time, like me, does and like another group of mates went away. We did, you know, LA, Vegas, and uh, Europe. That was. Is that the one where you did a Peaky Blinders theme? Uh, no, that was a mate's Bucks party. That Fuck, was that Kevin. Looks, Pro- that mate. looks sick, mate. That was Kevin Bo- Proctor's Bucks party. That was uh, that was pretty sick. Yeah, that, was, um, that looked elite. Yeah, so they're probably the three. Um, they're probably the three footy trips. Uh, my first European summer was awesome, but that was obviously, yeah. um, I was obviously retired. Yeah, true. But they're, they're probably the three. My first one and the the two Vegas ones, the two of the many Vegas Fuck, ones. that must hurt now, mate. <laughs> Thanks changed. for bringing that up. Yeah, I'm sorry. There actually was a funny photo you put up of your young boy Tate and you like forced him to watch your Anzac Day highlights. Yeah. So that's, that's the new, that's, that's the new feel good factor yeah, you yeah. get. Yeah, got to live my life. Well, he's only 18 months, so um, got to get him to school or something so I can go overseas again. Yeah. Well, mate, it's been a pleasure having you on. No worries. We've got a bit coming up with Swanee and Jake and everyone should check out Swanee yeah, and Friends absolutely. podcast. Is, um, check it out. It's yeah, fine. Is it a podcast? Yeah, no, not Swanee and Jake. I was, I was pumping oh, Swanee and Friends. Okay. Yeah, Swanee and Friends is a Swanee oh, and Jake. Uh, we yeah. still don't know what the hell it is. Yeah, no, you're not going to get any smarter by listening to me podcast, but um, oh, it's a bit of fun, mate. It takes you away from the weekly grind, I guess. Oh, just before we get signed off, let's let's have a crack here. Who do you reckon is going to win the flag? Uh, well, if I take my Collingwood hat off. so I don't, Do you think Collingwood can actually win it? They can absolutely can win the flag. Will they win the flag is a different question. Uh you know, how do you not say Geelong at the moment? Mm. They're absolutely flying, but I'm not going to say them. Is this their last chance, Geelong? No, they they're so remarkable. Could they be? Yeah, I mean they're always there. Yeah, I fucking guess. remarkable club. Like if you don't want to play at one of the big four clubs like Collingwood, you know, Essendon, and a basket case, they might be like Essendon, and Carlton, sort of Richmond. Like Geelong is a de- becoming a destination club. Like they just all they do is play finals. Like yeah. they have bottomed out. I can't remember last time they were on the bottom. Yeah, I don't think I was playing footy. Maybe early in my career, but. They just have a remarkable ability just to keep topping up with players and to keep themselves relevant. So, mm. mate, they uh, they must be an awesome club, awesomely ran football club. So, hats off to them. Well, Dane Swan, mate, been a pleasure as always. No Guys, worries. if you haven't left us a review, a like, or subscribe, please do so. Do it. And thank you very much. Same as Sw- Swanee and Jake. Yeah, yeah, Swanee and Jake. Yeah, fuck it. Bro, we need it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're doing painful shit, man. Come on, get get around us and um, yeah, appreciate you guys for for tuning in. 